Transport across membranes. So when we're looking at plasma membranes, we talked about the importance of the plasma membrane being able to prevent unwanted substances from coming in and allowing substances that we want to come in to be able to come in. It's fantastic. Great stuff. It's like the life of a bouncer, okay, which I wanted to be, but when I didn't grow taller than 166 I'm stretching. 165 centimeters, I realized that was not the life for me. But I'm happy because in my body I have uh, billions and billions of plasma membranes, which are kind of doing this for all kinds of poisons and bad substances that could potentially be harming me. So let's take a look at a silly example here first. Actually, it's not silly. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, it's related to osmosis. Saltwater fish made famous by... Finding Nemo, here you have a clownfish. Freshwater fish, just a regular old goldfish. Look how plain that looks. So who actually drinks water? This is true. Uh, some saltwater fish versus fre freshwater fish. Only one of these types of fish actually drinks the water that they are swimming in. Can you pause the video and figure this out? Maybe I won't tell you. Maybe I wait till the end. Nah. Okay, pause the video. Please pause and try to figure it out. Which one of these actually drinks the water. Okay, pause. All right, have you paused and thought about it? Um, first of all, osmosis, you should know. In general, it means that uh, the def definition is kind of confusing. It confused me when I was in, in school as well, too, because uh, you've memorized the definition of diffusion as the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an, air, an, an area of low concentration. It makes sense. You spray perfume in the corner of a room and the dense molecules start spreading out and eventually the uh, smell spreads throughout the room. So osmosis is kind of the same thing. We're talking about the movement of free water molecules. But uh, an easy way to think about this conceptually so you don't get confused with definitions is water tends to move to places that are more salty, that are more salty. So if you think about this, a freshwater fish, it's called fresh water because the water that's around it is not as salty relative to the actual body of the fish, not as salty. Whereas a saltwater fish lives in water that is much more salty compared to the actual inside of the body. So if you think about that, the water will naturally diffuse to an area that is more salty. So in the case of the saltwater fish, water from inside the fish's body is going to naturally be moving out into the water around there. So it's going to be losing water really, really quickly because it's moving to the more salty area. Whereas if you're a freshwater fish, your body's more salty compared to the outside due to the different concentrations of ions in the cells and things like that. So water is going to tend to diffuse from the outside here into the more salty part. So they're already getting plenty of water by not drinking, staying hydrated. So that's actually the saltwater fish that have to constantly drink because water is constantly uh, diffusing out, okay? That's the simple, plain English way to explain it. Hopefully that made sense to you. Let's look at some other ways, some other ways that things can uh, move in and out of a cell membrane, ah, plasma membrane. Keep catching myself on that. In general, we're gonna split it up like this. Um, passive transport versus active transport. Which one sounds like it needs more energy? That's correct, active. Pass Passive is diffusion related. It just happens naturally because we're talking about concentration gradients. So passive can be split up into simple diffusion, uh, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion um, is going to require something to help us facilitate the diffusion of molecules from a large uh, area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Active transport are types of transport that require some energy. Therefore, membrane pump, this sounds like we have to uh, use some energy. Uh, endocytosis, which sounds like into, into, does it? I don't care. It does to me. Into cytosis. So this is about bringing things in, bringing things in by the folding of the membrane. We'll see that in a second. And exocytosis sounds like exit. So it's helping to move things out by vesicles fusing with various membranes. So uh, let's take a look at some of these in more detail really quickly. Simple diffusion, really simple. You have a 
molecules of a high concentration on one side, molecules of low concentration on the other. Why is it called simple? Because they're small enough to diffuse into the cell or, or out of the cell just directly through the phospholipids, so between the phospholipids themselves. It doesn't require anything, any kind of a protein channel or anything like that. So simple diffusion due to random movement of molecules, those that can cross the cell membrane will, and it's a dynamic equilibrium. It doesn't mean if there's a crowded amount here that they're all moving this way and it's just one-way traffic. What it means is that there is two-way traffic, but in general, because there are more over here, they will eventually spread out and it will become more uh, equalized. They move down their concentration gradient. That's the key uh, idea with diffusion here. So those things that can cross directly are small, nonpolar, and uncharged. Because the majority of that cell membrane, if you look at those diagrams, are those tails, the phospholipid tails. And the phospholipid tails do not like water. So most things have to be nonpolar. Um, I think it's important to point out, though, I say they don't like water means they don't like polar substances, but water itself, and it's a little complex on how to explain that, but for now, water itself can actually uh, diffuse in and out uh, very easily of a cell membrane. So we're looking for balances of water. So when we're talking about uh, specific molecules that can pass through, in general, there are exceptions, small, unpolar, and nonpolar and uncharged. Facilitated diffusion is also involving diffusion, but for some reason these molecules can't pass through because they're just too big. They can't squeeze through here. They're too big. So they need a protein channel. That's it. A protein channel goes through the membrane. Remember, it can be called a transmembrane protein as well, too. It's also down concentration gradient. Molecules that are too big, polar or charged, need to be specifically guided through the cell membrane. Okay, some protein channels can open and close. Sodium channels you're going to see later when we talk about nerve impulses, um, action potentials, sodium, potassium, they play a big role and they are actually going through these types of channels as well too. Really, really interesting. So we talked about myo uh, osmosis, we talked about simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Those are all types of passive transport. They don't require any energy. And when I mean energy, I mean ATP, the molecule, the unit of energy uh, in our cells is ATP. So passive transport, that was basically summing up. It requires uh, passive transport, could be osmosis, could be simple diffusion, just going straight through here, or a facilitated diffusion, which uses a protein to help get things through, okay? Another reason you can see why this protein would, would be helpful, you'll see this in the higher level section of, of proteins, but um, if I'm a glucose molecule, for example, glucose for one is too big, and number two, it's kind of polar. And so these tails are gonna reject that large molecule and uh, push it away because it, they don't uh, react in a positive way that's gonna bring it to forwards. So actually the glucose molecule can make it through this tube. And so how, what would the structure of this particular protein channel look like? Well, it's actually made up of amino acids, but let's forget about that for now. The basic structure of this tube would be, well, the outside has to like fatty acids. It has to be nonpolar, otherwise they would be pushed out. So it has to fit in so that these tails here can bind to it and it kind of stays there. But the inside has to be hydrophilic so that molecules like glucose and everything can actually be attracted to this and be pulled all the way through. So that's really interesting. Now we move on to the types of transport that require energy. I'm gonna do this very, very quickly here. This looks familiar. It's some kind of protein channel, but in this case we call it a pump because you can see really small here, we're using ATP to help us actually get something across. And so why do we need energy? Well, usually because we're moving things against the concentration gradient from low, a low concentration area to a high concentration area. That requires ATP. Pause the video, study these diagrams really quick. We have to do this for plants as well too in order to absorb some of the minerals. Sometimes uh, there's a very small amount of minerals in the actual soil. There's more that's inside. We can't just rely on it to flow directly in, so we have to actually pump it in. So we have to use uh, ATP and energy here. So pause, take a look at that, and then we'll move on to the next one.
So energy is required, and uh, one example is the sodium potassium pump, which is also very important in nerve cell transmission. Another diagram to look at, same concept here, it's showing you that ATP is required to help move things against their particular concentration gradient. Okay, the final two ways to move things in and out, and you should definitely search YouTube for animations showing endocytosis and exocytosis. They, they involve vesicles, which sounds like a vehicle because the goal or the role is to help move things around. Now, I mentioned before, we call it the plasma membrane and not the cell membrane. The vesicle, the outline of the vesicle, this membrane is made up of the same stuff that this outer membrane is made up of and the same stuff that these membranes are made up of. So they can kind of pinch off and move around with each other all the time. So endo sounds like into. So if I need to bring something in, this is like a big white blood cell that's taking in a bacteria. It's going to fold its membrane to actually engulf this. It's called endocytosis. Energy is required. And once it's in, this membrane can actually fuse back together and you end up with like a little bubble. This is the vesicle. This is a vesicle that has actually taken this thing in. And then it can actually be digested by fusing with other lysosomes that contain things. So in general, moving something in to a cell by the inwards folding or invagination of a plasma membrane is called endocytosis. The opposite of which is called exocytosis. So take a look, this is showing it really nice. Here's a vesicle. It's moving towards the plasma membrane. When it gets close, check out how, because they're made up of the same material, the membrane actually fuses and it just becomes part of the plasma membrane and the contents that were inside get released. So literally, this when this vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane, the plasma membrane just got a tiny bit longer, just got a tiny bit longer. If we pinch it in, this is called endocytosis, the plasma membrane just got a tiny bit shorter. All of these processes require energy and so we group them into the type of transport called active transport. Another picture showing how this works grand scale. Here's the plasma membrane that we used to call the cell membrane. Golgi apparatus, you can see bits are pinching off to transfer things and can be delivered outside of the cell. Here are where the proteins are actually made. The proteins can be packaged in here, in, in vesicles. Uh, it's just a big, it's like a transportation system. And it's great because they're all made up of the same material on the outside, which helps to move things back and forth really, really easily another diagram showing something similar. Okay, here's a nice summary. Uh, post any questions that you have. Again, search YouTube and look for uh, all kinds of animations because there's some really cool stuff out there. And that's the best way to try to visualize something as dynamic as the plasma membrane and how materials get moved in and out of cells across the membrane. All right.